This is the translation of today's khutbah. One of the uh, important areas of education for a believer, for Muslims, is to learn about the uh, bi biography of the Sahaba and the good people, uh, where we learn how to attain high ranks in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is really the, the best way to attain the pleasure and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these people were close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and to applying the Islamic teachings. Of course this is also encouragement. This is also a way of making us steadfast and stable and strong in front of challenges. One of these things when the Prophet Sallallahu told us about different ways to attain the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In, 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 in one case, in one incident, which is quite interesting, learning cases, a group of Muslims or believers came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this group is of the poor, of the people who had no means. A group of the poor Muslims came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور. What does it mean? They are referring to the rich, to the people who have the means. And they are saying, Ya Rasulullah, the people who have money and means, they are uh, ahead of us in the sight of Allah because they have money and they're given sadaqah, they are supporting the army, they are supporting the Muslim community, they are giving here and there. Huh? Of course, people who give fi sabilillah, to help people, to support, huh? of course they will get a lot of reward. So they thought uh, about it and they came to complain that it's, is it our fault that we don't have? Uh, just like them, we are not rich. So the rich are attaining uh, higher ranks in the sight of Allah because Allah gave them money, Allah gave them the means so they can spend and gain reward more than us. So the Prophet wasallam said, uh, shall I tell you something that you can do? Hmm? It could give you also huh? the chance to attain rewards. He said, yes, of course. He said, to subbihoon Allah, to halilun, to kabbirun, huh? To say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, huh? Right? So easy, <laughs> no money to take out. Uh, it's it's simple. So they took this re uh, risk recommendation and recipe, and they went back to say it. But then they came back. They said, Ya Rasulullah. Our brothers knew about it, so they were also doing it. Also the rich knew about that, so they also say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar, and they say, make the dua. So we are no longer unique. We don't have anything special. So the Dalika Fadlullah. So the Prophet ﷺ smiled, he said, this is the uh, wisdom of Allah. He gives people different shares. But is this the end of the story? Is this all? Does it mean all, only the rich will attain high ranks all the time? Let's see what the story of the khutbah today was talking about. The Prophet ﷺ told us a story of a person. And this person is, is, is what's special about him is 
Although this person was not rich, although this person was not a Sahabi, he didn't meet the Prophet because you know what it means a Sahabi. The definition of a Sahabi is a person who physically met the Prophet Even if that person lived at the time of the Prophet and was a Muslim, is not considered Sahabi until he physically huh, met face to face with the Prophet This is why the king of Abyssinia, king of Ethiopia, Rahimahullah, is not considered Sahabi. He's a Muslim, Rahmatullahi alayhi, but he didn't meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although he was one of the great people, huh? the king of Ethiopia, of Al Habasha. He was Muslim, but he didn't meet the Prophet. So the Prophet is still telling us this person, he said, Khayru at Tabi'in. He's describing that person huh? as the best of my followers. The people, not of the Sahaba, because the at Tabi'in are the people who came after the Sahaba. So the sequence is Sahabi is the person who lived at the time of the Prophet وسلم, met him physically, huh? and then those who did not meet the Prophet but they met the Sahaba called At Tabi'in, means followers, right? And then the next generation is called Tabi'in at Tabi'in, right? Why we say that? Why we give special rank to these three generations? Because the Prophet وسلم, said, خير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم That the best of generations is mine, his generation, the, the companions, and the followers and the followers. Huh? So three generations. And the, the fuqaha and the ulama, they're using this as the, this is one of the uh, guidelines for tashri'ah. If they need to look for something, first they see if the Quran said something about it, if the Prophet وسلم, said anything about it, if the Sahaba has done it, and if the followers have done something about it, or if the followers of the followers. These are the, this is a benchmark. This is a guideline for us. These three generations are the best. We are not meant to be a replica of that. We cannot. We will not have a generation's uh, a replica of the generation of the Sahaba. Because at that time, almost 100,000 of the best people ever on earth uh, gathered around Muhammad We may not have a generation as pure together collectively as that but we can look at what they've been doing and we can follow huh we may not have a ruler like abu bakr but all the rulers need to follow abu bakr need to learn what abu bakr radiallahu anhu have done what umar has done what uthman has done what ali these are the why we call him rightly guided khalifas we don't we're not asking our khalifas or our rulers to be uh, same like Omar or Ali or Abu Bakr, but we are asking them to study their life and biography and to follow and to do to, be, to have the same mind, the same justice, the same shura, the same uh, mercy, the same understanding, right? So back to our story of this, not Sahabi, but the Prophet ﷺ said, Khayru tabi'in, the best of the followers. And he said, Rajulun min al Yemen. A man from Yemen. And Yemen, how far is Yemen from Medina? Uh, 3,000 or more kilometers. Right? Rajulun min al Yemen yud'a Uwais al Qarni. كان بارا بأمه وكان به برص برئ منه إلا موضع درهم فإن استطعت يا عمر فإن لقيته واستطعت أن يستغفر لك فافعل A man called Uwais Al-Qarni from a, a tribe Al-Qarni He has a mother 
whom he's kind to her. He's showing kindness to his mom. He's good to his mom. Huh? And he was leper. He had leprosy, disease, skin disease. And he was cured from this disease except a coin spot, a spot as size of a coin in his back, on his body. Or oh, Umar, if you meet him, the narrator is Umar of this hadith. Or oh, Umar, if you meet this man and you can ask him to seek forgiveness for you, do that. So what's special about this always? This is what's special about it. <coughs> the hadith. He's good to his mother. So this person who's not a companion, he didn't meet the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't even travel to meet. He was a Muslim. But he didn't even uh, take the effort to come to meet the Prophet ﷺ. Who doesn't want to meet the Prophet? Who wants not to? But you know what stopped him from coming to Medina to meet the Prophet ﷺ? to stay with his mother because he don't want to leave his mom he's the caretaker of his mother he didn't leave his mother to come to see to meet the messenger of Allah the seal the final messenger whom people would spend their lives to come and meet him but this is a good deed this is what made him special, even with the Prophet Sallallahu that he's good to his mom and he didn't leave his mom to come and meet me. And made him what he's... Huh? Also, this guy is poor. And in another, in another description of his, that this person, he barely has the meal of the day. And he would collect huh, wood, or even seeds and sell it to buy food right for the day and and at the end of each evening at the end of each evening this Uwais al-Qarni would take everything remaining of food and clothing he has and give it in sadaqah whatever in his home food and clothing and give it in sadaqah at the end of each day and he would say oh Allah if any of the people dies of hunger don't blame me he gives away all the food remaining in his home at the end of each night or evening and he would say Allahumma lad in mata musliman min al ju' fa la tu'akhidni if any person dies of hunger, I'm not to be blamed. And if any person dies because of uh, lack of dress, don't blame me. I am doing my best. I'm giving everything I have. So don't. This person has literally enough for the day enough to eat enough to dress enough to survive and he's doing that and in a conversation he had with another person from his tribe he said yeah murad murad is a part of al qarni tribe he said the path of allah huh? the path of allah is great but it leaves you with very less friends. It doesn't keep uh, many friends to you in this path because you have to face them with reality. You have to face people with reality. You have to tell them the truth. And I will, wallahi, I'm gonna face the people with the truth even if it's gonna lose me all the friends. It's tough knowing the rights of Allah. Knowing the rights of Allah leaves you no pleasure in this world. Leave, leaves you with no pleasure. 
knowing that you will leave this world one day you will die and leave it leaves you with no enjoyment nothing to regret in this world knowing that you're gonna end up in the Jannah that's eternal look at this logic of this person who didn't have much of this world this person the Prophet said described him as the best of my followers the best because of that Umar radiallahu anhu we never there is a caravan there is a convoy coming from the south from Yemen he would meet them and he would ask them is Uwais al-Qarni amongst you is Uwais al-Qarni among you selves with you in in the trip he will say no until one day they said yes so where is he he came are you always al-qarni he said yes are you from murad thumma min qarn he said yes as the prophet specifically said you have a mother he said yes my mother is there were you lipa? Did you have this disease and you were cured from that? He said yes. And you still have a spot in your body as uh, the size of a coin from leprosy? He said yes. He said look. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said and he narrated the hadith. Khayru al-tabi'in rajulun yud'a uwais al-qarni the best of my followers is Uwais al Qarni. He has a mother whom he's kind to her. And he was leper and he was cured. And he's a coin sizer of the proceeds still in his body. And if you meet him, Omar, and you can ask him to pray for you for forgiveness, then do it. Oh, Uwais, ask Allah forgiveness for me. And he prayed for him. Where are you going, Uwais? He said, I'm going to Al-Kufa. He's going to Al-Kufa. He's seeking knowledge. He's going there to Al-Kufa and he said, shall I write to the ruler of Al-Kufa for you to take care of you? He said, no, Ya Amir al mubirin please don't. I'd rather be amongst the lay people, amongst the rest of the Muslims I don't want people to know to give me any special so he let them go and he was asking about him with every Hajj delegation is always coming is he there and so on until how did he end up dying there was a war in Azerbaijan at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu and Uwais was in the army so he joined the army of Muslims and he was killed and he died actually sorry he died in that army radiallahu anhu this is the story of a person who was not rich he was not of the people who are special in fact people didn't know about him He's of those the Prophet ﷺ described as Rubba Ashatha Akbar. Maybe a person whose body is dusty, whose clothing and body is dusty because of travel and work, and his hair is curly and not organized because he is simple person Rubba Ash'atha Akbar Huh? Tumrain His dress is two pieces of cloth top and bottom very basic and always had them huh? of wool two pieces Rubba Ash'atha Akbar Tumrain Law aqsama ala Allahi la This person whom you think is worthless if he's, a, if he's around, people will not feel his presence. 
If he's absent, people will not miss him. Huh? He's not of the people of authority. He's not people of money. He's not of the elite. Still, لو أقسم على الله لا أبره. If this person asks Allah for anything, Allah will give it to him. Not only that, the expression of the Prophet ﷺ, if he swears to Allah, if he says, Ya Rabb, do that for me, or do that, Allah will fulfill his oath. Allah will do that because of this person. You think he's not of your elite and special people? How many people are like that? Who are not special in this world, but they are very special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have no real rank in this world, but they have high rank in the heavens. Come, come in a nas. How often we find people who are like that. In fact, there is this, a chapter in the Quran by the name of Luqman, right? Luqman is similar to that. A very simple person, but he attained this with Allah. Not only he attained this rank, he, his name is mentioned uh, in one of the chapters as one of the good people. How many people are negligible in this world, but they are reputable in the heavens? How many? You know what? You know the story of the person, the Prophet Sallallahu when he was sitting with his companions, he said, يَخْرُجُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْآنِ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Shortly, you will see a person from paradise will come, uh, will pass by you. And it, one of the people, one of the Muslims, laborers, came, uh, passed by with wudu dripping from his uh, face and hands. Just one of them, normal Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ repeated this over three days. And you know the rest of the story when Ibn Umar followed this man to home to find out what makes him special. He found nothing, nothing extra. No extra salah, no extra qiyam, no extra sadaqah. But that person still, regardless, he was from the people of Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said that. And you know what was the secret? His heart. Clean heart. Nothing against people. Nothing against Muslims. So, the road to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is initiated here. With a clean heart, good deeds. Huh? Clean heart and good deeds. Uwais al Qarni huh? attained it. The Prophet ﷺ explained why being good to his mom, to the parents, to the people, giving sadaqa, even the sadaqa. What would Uwais have? This person who had barely enough for the day. What to give in sadaqa? Millions or hundreds? Nothing. Whatever. His capacity. His capacity. Give what you can. Huh? Give and do what you can do. This is what Allah Maybe one uh, real is better than a thousand. Uh, is it my words? No, it's the, the Prophet's words. Rubba dirham sabaqa alfan. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that. Because you know what? The story of this. I'll conclude with that. When they were collecting, the Prophet وسلم, used to make campaigns to collect donations from the Muslims. To collect the sadaqa, he did it for many different reasons. For example, he he did that campaign when he was collecting money for the army, right? He want to uh, buy stuff and uh, uh, for the army for Tabuk. They didn't have that. They didn't have really treasury and uh, money for the government. The, the way is to ask people to come and pay and to donate. So people will bring money. At that time, you remember, Umar radiallahu anhu brought half of his wealth. Abu Bakr brought all his wealth. At that time, Umar said, I'm going to beat Abu Bakr this time. I'm going to bring my, huh? Half of my wealth. 
And when he came, he found Abu Bakr brought everything he had. So he said, I will never huh, think of beating Abu Bakr. So people will start bringing. Uthman radiallahu anhu gave 1,000 camels. He was rich. And he gave 1,000 uh, fully loaded camels for the Muslim army. Battle. For the battle. Ah. So the Muslims were giving kindly, generously, right? Now, in other incidents, the Prophet وسلم, received a delegate from the people around outside Medina, far away. And he found he, this delegate looked very poor very thin so the prophet وسلم, was very sad was very sad that there are such muslims such people who are starving who have nothing this delegate if they are like that what about the people what about their own families so the prophet وسلم, was very sad for their situation he said and then he called the people of Medina, the Muslims, to donate, to come and give sadaqah to these people, to give it to them. So some people started getting big amounts with the money or food, huh? and some people will bring a handful of food. Just what will this be worth of dates? Huh? Five rials, two rials, one rial? So one person brought this. That's so people were laughing that this person is bringing little, huh? just nothing, five, ten dates. So people laughing at this person. What is he bringing? Almost nothing, just little thing. The Prophet وسلم, said, Rubba dirham sabaka al Maybe this one dirham worth of dates is better than a thousand someone else gave. It depends. It depends on two things. Maybe this is everything this person had, like always. Maybe this is all huh, what this person has. Maybe he had only this amount and he took it from home. Or maybe this is half of their wealth. He left the same to his family and he brought the same. And the second factor is the sincerity. Is the sincerity in the heart that will make this one dirham better than a thousand. So, someone has a million and gives a thousand, and someone have ten and gives one or five, or gives the ten. This person gave all his wealth, the ten, and that person gave one thousand. Allah will reward, but it's a, it's a difference. Right? So the Prophet said, Rubba dirham. Maybe one dirham in the sight of Allah is better than 1,000 given, maybe for show off. Right? So, you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uwais, radiallahu anhu wa Allah, was dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not asking for show off. In fact, he was running away from people. So he would avoid huh? show off completely may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding and the sincerity ameen ya rabbil alameen allahumma ij'al hadha al-balad aminan mutma'innan wa sahira bilad al-muslimin allahumma ansur jundaka al-muwahideen wa ibadaka al-salihin wa salli allahumma wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in